this is Barbara Gon Mueller, and welcome to peacepodcast.org. You're in for a treat today. As our planet and so much of our, of our friends are suffering from COVID-19, what can we do? Can we pray for them? Can we heal them? And today we're going to talk to Dr. Barbara Dossi, an inter- internationally recognized integrative holistic nursing practitioner. She has so many awards that I don't even know if I can begin to tell you all of them. But the one thing that I am proud of is that she didn't let her wisdom disappear. She has written 25 or co-authored 25 books. So when we are through with our podcast today and we're done talking to Barbara, I'm going to ask her her website because I want you to be able to go and learn from her wonderful books, including um, she received the American Holistic Nursing Association recipient 11 times. This is something that, you know, people get once and they're happy, but 11 (laughs) times. So Barbara, welcome. Oh, Barbara, thank you so much for being here. And as you are speaking about that, uh, I will say that I love working with people. And uh, my success has to do with the success of all my friends. And that's uh, what I believe that we have to do at this moment in time with our work is to find like minded colleagues create those partnerships so that we can take a deep dive into our passion and we have social action that is going to make a difference on this planet. Oh, social action is where it's where we need to put our energy. And as I interviewed your husband today and he talked uh-huh. about connectiveness, don't be afraid of being connected. Yeah. We go further. And, and, and I watched your May 12th interview. I don't know if it was an interview. It was a symposium, wasn't it? It was, right. About Florence Nightingale. I I wanted to ask you your questions, but tell us a little bit. Why are you so passionate about Florence Nightingale? (laughs) Well, I think it's very important for the uh, listener uh, and uh, to know that Florence Nightingale was born in 1820 and died in 1910. She is the founder of modern secular nursing and statisticians, public health, social scientists also came uh, claim her as a founder. I'm passionate because I've now been in nursing 54 years, and I think it's very important if we understand the historical perspective of our profession. Who are the leaders in there? And Florence Nightingale specifically is, her 200th birthday was May the 12th. And when we understand our legacy and we understand and uh, look at the life of people that have led us to where we are now, What this does is it allows us to also look at what they went through, that if you are going to be out there on a limb, you are going to be confronted with many, many different challenges and stressors and feel overwhelmed, but how do you get through? So this has been extremely helpful. And now as we are blessed to be in 2020 with the World Health Organization and the successful United Nations and the declaration of all of the 153 member states of the UN and those 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We have a way where whatever it is that we're doing that we can look at these 17 goals. And so I'll just look at uh, SDG three, which is good health and well-being. Now that right there just has nurses work written all over it. But every one of those SDGs are tied to what is about good health and well-being. So you have one on avoiding hunger, poverty, gender equality, uh, healthy cities, uh, strategic partnerships, just to name a few of them. So at any given time, whatever we are working on, we are always, we're usually working on three or four together. So they're just not in isolation. So this is for cool. people to look at the SDGs. The SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, were adopted by the General Assembly at the United Nations in 2015, and you knew that. And that, and so I interviewed Rachel Pittman, who is the, I am president of the UNA USA, um, Santa Barbara Tri-Counties, and she was talking about how the Sustainable Development Goals are now entering the decade of action. We've had five years where we shook our head and said, yes, this is what we want. Now we're gonna enter the decade of action. And what better group of women and men but the nurses on our planet? How many nurses do we have on our planet? I think that is very important. There are 29 million nurses and midwives globally. And 
everyone knows a nurse. If they don't know a nurse, they're just one step away from knowing one. But there are nurses in our families, in our communities, in our, in our churches, and every place where we interact in our communities. So I will say right now, if you have never worked with a nurse, identify one or more nurses in your community and whatever your project was, because nurses know how to work in this collaborative space. They sure do. I have watched so many nurses on TV with this COVID-19, and I see compassion, I see expertise, and I see love. And I know that these people who cannot see their family because of not spreading the disease are Mm -hmm. so grateful to the nurses who give them that extra pat or that extra tap of love. And I don't know where we'd be without our nurses. In fact, my little girl's life was with the nurse. She was our neighbor and she knew more than the doctors in her clinic. And we would always go to, her name was Larry. And I'd say, hey, Larry, I think I have this. She said, well, let me, let me think about that. And she'd tell me what I had and I didn't have to go to the doctor. And I loved her. So there are nurses out there who know so much. And yet each of them have this gigantic capacity for heart. Right. And let me also say what your Larry, the nurse you were speaking about then, she was practicing nursing. She was encouraging, she was telling you, putting your symptoms together and giving you some possibilities, but inviting you also to go see a physician. (laughs) If I needed it, she would have put me there. You know, some of these things were very simple and in a little girl, not knowing, and she would just reassure me, but going to the clinic was important. Yes, because the clinic was right down the street, and we always went when we needed it. My dad especially, who had seven heart attacks, and I think it's because he had three girls. Well, we don't need to go into that. But we were always telling my dad what to do. So he had a wife and three daughters. Oh, dear God in heaven. So let's talk a little bit about this nursing practitioner that you are. You said you've been, been a nurse for 54 years. You've seen a lot of healing. What is healing? Oh, I have. And let me also say that... Uh, When we use the term nurse practitioner, that means that you are focused in a clinical specifically. I am a nurse generalist and an educator. I'm not an MP. So that nurse practitioner, that's for that. Uh, So uh, thank you for clarifying that. That makes a lot of sense. I understand now. So I am an advanced holistic nurse practitioner, but I'm not a nurse practitioner. You're an educator. I'm an educator, right. Yeah, I look forward to hearing what you think is healing today, because, you know, every time you, I think about holistic health, I think about the nurses, and I feel that our healing, sometimes, even though the doctors give us the advice that we need, the nurse seems to end our suffering. Why is that? Well, I, I think one thing is nurses certainly understand healing, and that is that this is our lifelong journey of opening up what we've closed down, to recognize that when we stay steady, we have that capacity to begin to look at using our creativity so that we can open up again to release fears and to recognize that there is a place where we can connect with a higher sense of self. We're not just this little person locked here, but how do we open up our hearts and our minds? Uh, And I think uh, frequently what happens is people confuse healing and curing. It can be a both and of healing can simultaneously happen, but even when someone dies, someone can be in that space at the very last minute, I've seen it happen so many times, where there is healing that happens The person is about to die, but they have a reconciliation or a healing with a family member or something else in their life. Curing is getting rid of the symptoms, but healing is where we go into that deeper place of our own interior beingness. Wow. Can you um, talk a little bit about the strategies to help we find balance in these challenges today? You you know, you, you probably have worked with thousands of nurses, and they've all had these challenges. Um, And so how do we handle these challenges in the world today without our nurses, with the nurses? Right. Well, I think one of the things that is uh, absolutely essential in this work is how do we find that place of loving and kindness for ourselves? We can't always be pushing externally, but we have to take that moment in time to truly 
feel this sense of connectedness with ourself. And this is not selfish. We have to do this. And so what happens is when we are able to touch the base of this loving kindness, this is what transforms our sense of separation and alienation to a real sense of love. And it's a feeling that we all know at one level or another. And I think the other thing, too, when we speak about loving kindness, it's not something that we can bank and hold on to. And so it's when I feel a sense of love, and it's like right now there's a sense of just being here with you. There is a feeling of love. We're sharing ideas. We're looking at what are the possibilities. And so as I see your smiling face, I see you resonating with some of what I'm saying. There's that feeling of it just, it's giving it away. And it just, and then what happens, we give it away and it comes back. So that's really important. And I think that also in regard to this loving kindness too, we have to look at compassion. Right now, there's so much suffering in the world. Oh my goodness. Um, and we have to be able to, name the suffering. And so that's what compassion is. And it really starts with us right now, each and every single day, identifying where we have a sense of suffering. And what happens is when we take that time to be with that quality of identifying our own suffering, then we are able to go to a deeper level and then begin to look at some possibilities of how do we transform the suffering. So when we can name the suffering in ourselves, we then are more, we have a greater capacity to listen to other people's suffering. And it's in listening to other people's suffering we recognize too that it's not just us that suffer, but then we look at what's going on right now with people that are losing their homes. There, uh, there's death from COVID, uh, from all kinds of illnesses and all the other tragedies that are going on in the world right now. So what we do then with compassion is when we're with our own suffering and our own compassion, we are able to then look at naming it and taking the steps to transform that suffering. And I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, Another piece of that, too, is we have to find some joy every single day. And, and when we can find joy, and you think, how can we find joy with all, everything that seems to be going wrong in the world? But just to, like right now, and we're blessed, we don't have smoke here in New Mexico right now, uh, like it's happening in California and Oregon and Washington. But just when I stepped outside this morning to take a short walk, just the joy of being out in nature. I could feel myself just releasing some tension and tightness that I had already accumulated from just working for, you know, a couple of hours. And so it's that joy then that allows us to be with others. And uh, a, a key phrase that we also look at in our lives too, we, we know this word of equanimity. And I, I, I just, I think it's a beautiful word. And what it is, it is when we are mindful and we find that stability within our mind, within our soul, within our self, to stay steady. And then we can begin to create the practices and take care of ourselves so that we then can be there to bear witness to other people and help them uh, in their journey. You said so many things in this five minutes from experiencing joy and finding joy and the Bible even says, when you are in your last moment and God says to you, how much joy did you experience? And I'm not talking about joy from a cigarette or joy from alcohol. I'm talking about genuine joy, the joy of walking outside in the morning and having the gratitude that you are free to walk. Exactly. And enjoy that moment. That's pure joy to me. I keep a gratitude journal. Why? Because I know even in my darkest moments, I can say, I've got a computer in front of me. I have electricity. I have my health and I have my thoughts and I have my heart. And those are the things that I can be grateful for. And then I can change my mind about what it is that's bugging me. And I always know every problem is a solution to something bigger and better. And I, just believe that. That's my philosophy. 
Um, right. You know, I, as you're speaking about uh, just different kinds of rituals of healing that we can do, and there's one in the mindfulness practice is when you sit, sit, and really feel that experience of the breath in and out. And I find the breath to be one of the ways to deeply go into a present moment. And there is a phrase in a mindfulness practice of strong back, which gives us that strength to go through the suffering and then the soft front of compassion. So it's the breath in and out and staying there. So this softness allows us to have that compassion for ourselves as well as for others. That's what I loved about what you were saying, because when you understand yourself and you have compassion, we're not perfect. We weren't, we probably were born perfect, but then we were programmed to agree with things that may not have been in our DNA. And so you have to step back a bit and your breath will tell you when you're on target with what you need to do. The breath is a magic kind of a awareness when we have it. And, and do you use that every day in your life? I use it throughout the day. Right. Right. <laughs> and I think one of the things, too, with the breath that's so important is it's not like taking a breath in and stopping your diaphragm of going, <sighs> but taking a breath in and allow your stomach to blow up like a balloon and then exhale and let your stomach fall back to your spine. That breath has to be deep in order to really go to this deeper place with the breath. I've learned the technique at not using breath whenever I wake up because my, you know, you have moments sometimes when you have a bad dream and I just realize that my breath takes me to a new level of awareness and I do that deep breathing at night when I need to fall back asleep and pretty soon it's morning. So people (laughs) say to me, I can't fall asleep. Well, use your breath to put you back to sleep. Exactly. Mind wanders, go back to the breath in and out. And another practice that I love in the morning too is to wake up and if you can hold it without getting out of bed to go to the bathroom (laughs) and empty your bladder, but just to be there for a moment in bed and feel how relaxed your body is, how your breath is just breathing you, you're not even thinking about it and anchor that experience And literally, one of the ways when I anchor experience, when I get to that place throughout the day or whatever, I will either put my hands together as a reminder of an anchor, but more often, I will just put my hand over my heart, and that becomes the anchor. And so then, just a mere touch alone allows me to feel that anchor of, ah, I do know how to relax. I do know how to find a little loving kindness for myself right now. I do know how to be here to bear witness to my own suffering or that of someone else. That is so amazing. Such a simple technique of not jumping out of bed and just letting your mind be in that peaceful place when you first wake up. That's such a beautiful idea. You know, people who are watching us today think sometimes that the world is so full of trauma (laughs) and and tragedies, and that it is. And so when you are a witness to yourself and how you heal so that you can be there for others, I tell people that you might be the peace somebody else needs. And that's why those 85 peacemakers I interviewed for the 2016 World Peace Conference, I always said, what is peace? And they said, peace is an internal process. And if you carry it with you, now you you gave us a technique that we can carry it with us. Thank you. Yeah. And this is, this is why nurses are so important right now. Everybody's important, but nurses there at that bedside, they know how to take that breath in and be present in that moment to release everything else to be is fully present. And it is key. Nurses with their PPE, with their mask, they have their eyes and they have their voice uh, that is the instrument in the healing process. So they touch with their soul, they touch with their eyes, they touch with their words. Wow, that should be a song that is so precious. And I'm listening to Barbara Dorsey, Dr. Barbie Dorsey, who has written over 25 books or been a partner in including her words in these 25 books. Barbara, if people wanted to know more about the healing and the nurses in Florence Nightingale, where would they go for your website? Well, I would uh, send them to two websites, my Nightingale Initiative for Global Health. That is www.nighvision.net. 
and for my work in uh, integrative international nurse coaching right now. Very easy. The website is inursecoach.com. inursecoach.com. You're yep. right. It is easy. You know, um, <laughs> The legacy that Florence Nightingale left with us and the joy I felt as I sat through this wonderful conference. I guess that was her 200th birthday, wasn't it? On the It was. And also for the listeners, that is on the homepage. The, the, the webinar that you're speaking about, we posted on our, on our homepage. On the NI. The, yeah, the NI, and that stands for Nightingale Initiative for Global Health. NIVision.net. It's on the homepage. Yes, is so beautiful. You can now find out the wisdom that Florence Nightingale inspired us with and her association with Barbara brings it back into life. And how many of us don't value ourselves? She's teaching us how to value what we bring to the world, value that you are here today, value that you are that peacemaker. Or you may, may not be a fully trained nurse, but you sure can bring your compassion to the front ground absolutely compassion kindness and love barbara if you were to have a dream for our planet today with the ninety thousand, or is it 90 million i don't even know how many nurses and midwives we have 29 million nurses and midwives you see her that okay barbara if you had a dream what would your dream be for our planet <laughs> my dream would be that all the world connects with nurses and with each other to look at finding peace and joy locally so that we have healthy people living on a healthy planet. What a beautiful dream, Barbara. I thank you with all my heart for teaching, loving, and being present. It's a thank gift. you for inviting me to be with you today. You're so welcome. And as you listen to Barbara today, I hope you'll share this podcast with others. It's important. That's why we're doing it. She's a mentor to all of us to bring us into this realm of understanding how we need to be there to help the suffering of another. You don't know what a phone call can mean to somebody sometimes. Exactly. Exactly. And, and you call them up and you say, how are you? That's a simple thing to do. And you don't need to tell them how you are as much as you need to hear how they are. And, and the one thing I'm taking away with me now is the breath, that our breath is so important and so important to understanding ourselves. And then we can be there for others. Well, Barbara, what a compliment you are to Florence Nightingale. Oh, thank you. I'm here with my brothers and sisters around the world. <laughs> Wonderful. God bless you. And I look forward. And I'll send you the podcast as soon as it's up. And you who are watching us today, I want you to just watch this and then think, how does that impact my life? And what can I do to make this world a better place? Thank you for joining us. I'm Barbara Gon Mueller saying God bless you. 